A Souls-like anime RPG with an intense story proving to be quite the emotional roller coaster. This is Code Vein, a game I believe is extremely underrated as it's honestly an experience that's so in-depth and full of gripping moments like no other. So right now, I thought it was about time we count down those top 10 moments from Code Vein, with there being plenty to choose from as this game has a lot to offer. And as always, just a heads up, there are some major spoilers ahead. We begin this countdown focusing on Oliver Collins just trying to survive at your side is attacked. Now in direct contact with the miasma leads to the inevitable transformation to the lost and thus our first boss battle. The encounter was great fun and showed us what was to come going forward but it was learning of Oliver's struggles that made the moment really stand out as he was kind hearted, good natured and showed support for the weaker revenants yet for it to end in such a way provided an emotional send off at such an early stage of the game really emphasising that he deserved better, placing Oliver Collins fate at number 10. It was a memory carved into that vestige by the one who left it behind. Our ninth entry takes us to Louis finding his sister Karen only to discover that she's now a successor. So it's true. It was you all along. <laughs> Karen. From helping the injured revenants as a nurse, witnessing Cruz's frenzy in Louis's memory to a successor of the heart ultimately becoming Karen's fate was most unexpected. From a narrative standpoint this was a real shocker with the music and characters delivering on the scene brilliantly along with Louis's resolve from this point forward to prevent further revenant suffering and to save his sister overall provided an awesome moment, earning number 9. Karen. For our next entry we look to Yakimo and Emily reconnecting after the successor of the Claw. Yakimo! No way! It really is you Yakimo! You're all better too! Friends since an orphanage, together through the military and the events shortly after the Great Collapse, we learn that Emily made an almighty sacrifice to save her friends and Yakimo, so for the pair to finally reconnect in the vestige provided a real touching moment. Sorry it took me so long to get here. Don't worry, it was my decision after all. Ultimately due to their age you could tell that the pair were all too shy to reveal their true feelings to one another, yet through excellent narrative delivery you knew what was really going on, allowing the player to connect the dots in a moving moment that really delivered, earning number 8. I've always, Yakumo I've always, Our next entry puts us in a confrontation against the Butterfly of Delirium. Although the second boss battle in the game, I believe it to be the first real encounter that upped the ante with an increased difficulty spike with awesome to watch yet deadly attacks where Code Vein basically said to you, I'm not going to hold your hand anymore. It may have appeared early on but had such a unique design along with its venomous attacks really left a positive lasting impression that stands out amongst all boss encounters making the butterfly of delirium an encounter to remember, placing it at number 7. Our next entry brings us to a duo that have been through an awful lot together. Jack and Eva. I was still happy because I was with you. Yeah, me too. From Jack saving Eva and restoring her voice, their search for the successors with Eva's unique abilities yet always together and when it's time to deal with the successor of the throat, Jack steps up and saves Eva once again. So upon restoring Eva's memory, what's felt is a truly magical moment. Will you sing for me again? One last time. 
from Jack asking Eva to sing one last time. Their embrace and devotion to one another really comes off strong, showing their true love for one another, overall creating a real tearjerker of a moment. And when Eva's original form is restored, it adds that little extra icing on the cake, providing us with the fairy tale ending we hoped for between the two. Earning number six. Next, we jump back to the past, where the Queen finally reveals herself. Our ill-mannered guest is here. Guess that means we have to begin the festivities. What transpires is a truly fantastic fight sequence against the Queen alongside Jack that's fast, intense and frantic, and with the aid of Silver produces one of Code Vein's best movie sequences by far. This creature never hurt any of my people again. To learn the events of the past, defeating the Queen, with Jack delivering what he believes to be the killing final blow, stopping the inevitable frenzy after all is said and done, brings us up to speed with the events of the game in fantastic style, creating an overall exceptional moment, earning number 5. Sleep well, friend. Our next entry is a unique and compassionate tale, showing you that age, size and experience doesn't matter as long as the determination, will and heart is in the right place, with the story of Nicola. Nicola. Mia. From the great collapse, a desire to protect his sister at all costs, the steps Nicola would take from creating a clone despite caution and volunteering to become a successor, fully knowing the consequences, Nicola's tale is so admirable, standing out as a key and fantastic set of events, paced and delivered in such clever fashion, allowing the player to understand and sympathise with Nicola's plight, really making Code Vein shine through brightly. He's been here, fighting against the urge to frenzy all this time. It's incredible. Tough kid. It really is a story arc that's fantastic, standing tall till the very end, producing moments of utter brilliance, easily earning the number four spot. I love you, Nicola. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> I, I love you too, sis. Our next entry takes us to the events atop the Crypt Spire. From a challenging, exciting and fun multiple boss encounter done right, Mido revealing all as well as his actions to release Silver, leading to an epic showdown against the tyrant himself. There was certainly a lot to take in and do at this specific part of the game, and boy did it deliver by throwing one curveball at the player after another in what overall delivers an awesome set of events to remember, earning number 3. As far as DLC bosses go, they're a heck of a challenge with some great variety, but it's the Hellfire Knight that takes the trophy as our penultimate entry. A boss encounter that's big, bad and powerful, literally requiring you to hone your skills to the absolute best, with timing of the utmost importance. It's an encounter that, if determined, makes you get better with every attempt, and to reach victory has never felt so rewarding, so for a boss to be able to create that type of feeling to the player really stands leaps and bounds above the rest. So for what the Hellfire Knight brings to the table and gives to the player in challenge and reward earns him a near top spot on this list at number 2. For our final entry, we look to what's considered the true ending, Dweller in the Dark. I refuse to let the world end here. I swear, I will stop this. 
From the epic confrontations with the Skull King and the Virgin Born, to Eo's heartwarming words before making the ultimate sacrifice to save all, complete with a loud and powerful music track throughout, really emphasised the scene, proving that you'd worked hard and rewarded you with this moment. I was made so I could protect you with my It was somewhat bittersweet but an outright shocker that I don't think most saw coming, Plus, it opened the doors for what could possibly come next. The sequence of events didn't just rush for the credits, but made you savour every moment, delivering real weight and powerful messages, ultimately providing us with a fulfilling conclusion to a gripping and emotional tale as a phenomenal send-off, making it our best moment from Code Vein and earning our number one spot. So that indeed brings us to the end of our countdown, and I'm guessing that if you're still here, then you're a fan of Code Vein, and I hope you enjoyed, as I honestly believe that this game is a hidden gem, and I'd like to think or hope that there's a sequel down the line, as I'd love to see where it goes next. Though if you're still here, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel as it always helps me grow. It always goes a long way and is greatly appreciated. And if you can, then be sure to stick with me as I'll be bringing new videos to you soon. Take care now. Gavinci out.